class. Join me here today at the Riddings Fishery in Warwickshire where we're going to do some commercial winter feeder fishing. So the ground bait for this kind of fishing, I like to keep it simple. I use F1 Sweet on its own in the cool water version if the weather is mild. If, it is, if we are in the heart of winter like we are today, then I like to add a bit of brown crumb to it. This does two things. It's gonna create a sweet fish meal mix and it's gonna tone the F1 cool water down even more. So the way I'm gonna mix this, I've, been, I've had this bag now, I've already had two sessions out of this bag and I've got like a quarter of a bag left. So I'm gonna mix a quarter of a bag of um, F1 sweet, the cool water, to around a quarter of um, brown crumb. So in there is around a pint and a half of the of the F1 cool water. All I'm gonna do is add about half a pint of uh, the breadcrumb. simple as that. All we're going to do is just mix the dry ingredients around. A little point I forgot to mention, with my, um, with my brown crumb I like to put it through a blender so it, it literally grinds it into a dust so there's, it's adding food value to the ground bait yet the fish can't get at the food value if, if that makes sense. So I'll grind that down to, to basically a dust. Just mix the, the two together in the dry form. Once they're thoroughly mixed, just add your water a bit at a time. We're looking for quite a dry consistency to put through the feeder. And that gives us then something to work at. You can always make your mix damper, but you can't make it any drier once the water's in. Okay, so that's That's my ground bait done now. I've added around half a pint of water to the ground bait and it's a nice consistency. I can form a ball, but I know in 10 minutes when I put that through a riddle, it's going to be quite dry, but I can just add bits of water to it at, uh, throughout the day and just get it to the consistency that I, that I want for feeder fishing. Okay, so the setups for today's fishing. I've got an 11 foot tournament rod with a 4,000 reel. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna talk you through the important things that, that I think matter in this kind of fishing. So, first of all, we've got biting detection. Bite detection. This is, for me, the most important thing because if you can't see the bites, then you're not gonna catch any fish, basically. And I've, I've fall foul into this a few times. Um, until I started doing quite a bit of this kind of fishing. So, first of all, the rod. You want a nice light rod. The lighter, the better, but you need to still be able to do the job with it. So, I'm using the Daiwa Tournament, 11 foot. The main line is um, Suffix Advance, it's called. So, the reason I use this, it's 10 pound braking strain in 020, so that's quite a real, it's really low, it's a really low diameter line for the braking strain, but the most important part is it's as close to braid that you can get. So a lot of fisheries don't allow braid because it, it damages the fish basically, but this stuff, it's, it's got no stretch to it, so biting, bite detection is increased massively. So a lot of monofilament, mon, monofilament lines on the market these days have got a load of stretch in them. So when the fish takes that hook bait, when it pulls, you're not seeing anything on the tip because the, the stretch has to go through the line first before it reaches your tip. So this line is, is a massive edge for me. So that's the, the main line. And then the tip. So the tip of the rod is the next part of the, the equation. So you need to use the lightest tip you can get away with. So at the start, 
just put a bomb on um, around half an ounce, an ounce, cast it in to, to where you want to fish and just leave the rod in for, for three or four minutes and watch what the tip does. If the tip bends right round, then that tip's wrong. You need to step up a size. And vice versa, if you, if you cast in and the tip just sits still with no bending it at all, maybe step down one and see what happens then. You want to get the right tip so it just bends round or the line just tightens up but doesn't bend the tip right round because you want to be able to fish with basically a straight tip so anything, any little indication on that rod you need to be able to see because the water temperatures are dropping so low through underwater filming and stuff we've realised when the fish come in they're picking up the bait and they're not going anywhere they're literally picking it up off, off the, the lake bed and they're just sitting with it in the mouth anything that touches that bait you need to be able to see through that tip so that is the rod the next thing I want to talk about is hook lengths so I've had a look I've cast my bobbin today and there's not much of a toe on so I'm using an ounce tip but another thing that is very very important when there's no toe is hook length size so if there's some toe or you're fishing on a river you can get away with longer hook lengths like this is tied now to 60 centimeters a two foot hook length the hook length itself is a Preston FFF SFL B in a size 18. It's a, a fine wire hook, but it's, it's PTFE, so it's very sharp and the points do last. So that's the hook. However, from underwater footage, we now know that when your feeder hits the bottom, if there's no toe on the lake, your bait literally just follows the feeder down and lands by the feeder. The furthest away from that feeder that your hook's going to land is 30 centimetres so it's going to land in between zero centimetres so on top of the feeder or 30 centimetres so what is the point in having any longer hook length than 30 centimetres so what I'll do today because we've got no toe is I'll just take my 30 centimetre hook length box lay the hook at one end pull the line to the other end just like that and I know that is 30 centimetres. So what I'm going to do is just tie a loop in the end of the line. And I now know that I've got a 30 centimetre hook length. All I'm going to do with that is attach it to my little loop. So I've got a running feeder set up, as I always use, and then down at the bottom we've got three stops, as I've shown in plenty of videos, and then we've just got a little loop off the end of a, a swiveled boom. All I'm going to do is take the main, the the loop on the main line, pass it through the loop on the hook length. So a lot of people do this wrong, they pass the, the hook through the loop of the main line, but what you want to do is pass the, the loop of the main line through the hook length loop. Pass that through and then put the hook then through the loop on the main line. pull it tight and what you get is a real tidy loop to loop connection both the loops there's no knot there it's literally just one piece of line so there's no knot so nothing's going to take away from the strength and then all we're going to do is connect our feeder so the feeder this style of fishing the water temperatures have plummeted massively now, so we aren't going for the bait and weight option of put loads of bait in and just sit on top of it. It just won't work in the winter. Fish will shy away. 
you need to be really active in your peg but only putting small amounts of bait in so we're not overfeeding the fish so to do this all I'm going to do is start on a three hole cage feeder it's only 20 grams and that is my feeder setup from start to finish so I want to talk a bit more about the feeders I use so all the feeders I use for for my um, commercial fishing and a lot of my natural fishing apart from on rivers will be cage feeders so whether it be distance little little distance cage feeders big baiting up feeders or tiny little two hole cage feeders the all my feeders are from um, feederland.co.uk and they're absolutely fantastic they was all designed by international feeder anglers so it's designed by anglers for anglers so you can't you can't get any better than that really um, there's one more thing I want to talk about if you are allowed to use use braid on commercials then I would always try and use braid it's just going to aid bite detection even more because it's just even more direct than this this um, low stretch mono the braid um, that I'd use is suffix nano braid this is absolutely fantastic both the lines that that I'm using today won last year won awards for the best the best braid and the best monofilament lines the reason I like this it goes down to 04 diameter it's suffix if you don't know it's a big predator brand and predator fishing they're way way in front of us match anglers when it comes to braid fishing um, and, 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 and monos, anything to do with, with line basically, they've been just doing it much longer than us and, and that's the reason why I'm swapping over to, to predator angling stuff really. The, the lowest diameter braid we can get in the match scene is 08 diameter and it, it's not the best to be honest, you can get this down to 04 and when you cast it's like, it's like there's nothing on the end, it, it flies through the rings that easy that's why I use that. I'd use it in 06 and 04 and, and that's it. So yeah, that's my setups why, and the things I use to, to aid bite, present, uh, bite indication. Let's get some fishing done. Okay, so to start the session off, all I'm going to do is get my a point tub into my ground bait. So I've got a point of ground bait there. I'm just going to literally kick off with feeding neat, neat ground bait. What I'm doing is I'm just literally trying to look for a bite because there's a lot of pegs these days on commercials in this in this cold weather that are going dry. So they're literally not having a bite. So all I want to do is fish for one bite at a time. So what I'm going to do is hook a single red maggot and I'm going to fish just that neat ground bait through my feeder. Okay, so I'm going to start off today just with three or four minute casts just at the start for maybe the first 20 minutes, half an hour and then we'll, we'll go from there. So I've got two lines set up at 30 metres The reason I've got two lines set up is because w in winter the water clarity drops really low. So when you do on a lot of a lot of fisheries, you have to you have to have two lines because the fish spook really easy. As soon as you hook one fish, you won't get another bite then for a while. So when times are like that, you need to rotate your lines. So I'll nick one fish off the left hand line, one fish off the right hand line. So that was after two minutes, I've just cast in. And that's a bite straight away. It feels like a little roach or a little skimmer. And that's with it being in two minutes. And the reason for me not putting any free offerings in is because
because when a fish does go in over that ground bait, their only option to get some food is my hook bait. If there is an absolute shed load of fish there, I'll have to put some um, free offerings in. But at the moment, I'm just going to stick to the neat ground bait. And we'll see how it goes. But if it does get, get better, we'll start putting a few maggots in, pinkies, maybe some worms. Okay, so we've been fishing a while now. And I've literally stayed on this small free, uh, free hole oh, um, free hole feeder and I've just stuck on one line because the fishing's been a bit different to what I thought it was going to be. I thought we was, was going to be fishing for a few a few decent skimmers yet it's turned out to be quite a, an active day really or an active few hours and we're fishing for just small skimmers like six to eight ounce and I've not had time to sink my line to be honest so I'll just talk you through what I've been doing so I've been cast cast out with that little cage feeder and I've just been rotating hook baits really it doesn't really matter what you put on the hook as long as it's a small small bait like pinky or maggots or a small bit of worm but you can't it's important that you you hold your rod with this kind of fishing not because your rod's going to get pulled into the water but because you need to strike at the bites if if you put your rod down like there if you put your rod down you'll miss them bites Literally, they're tiny little twitches and the bite isn't really developing. So them little little twitches are your bite. So it's important that I'm holding my rod today and I'm not putting it down. I'm just trying to just whip the rod under the water to sink as much line as I can, as quick as I can. a skimmer about 12 ounce Sean's got no net yeah, so we're just fishing for little skimmers just like that and it is really quick. So you're casting in and your bite's coming in like 10, 15 seconds. So you must hold your rod. Okay, so we're coming to the end of the session now. We've got a lovely, it's lovely it's tree out of the be a bit nice. And it's quite surprised me really how, how the fishing's gone. So I thought that we was going to be fishing for five or six or seven nice skimmers but it's been the total opposite. Just caught a load of like six, eight, ten ounce skimmers. And it's been a joy to do really. They've just literally been like that, like peas in the pod really. Absolute fantastic fish here at the Riddens in Warwickshire. I've used, I've not even used all my ground bait. Still got a point left, so I've used two points of ground bait and not even a quarter of a point of maggots or pinkies. Yeah. So thanks for watching. We're going to get these fish back now, and I'll see you on the next one.